Hello everyone, and welcome back to my GM in WWE 2K23. We are in Reno, Nevada for the seventh week of season three. Our commissioner goal was to have at least one last man standing match for free special effects booking. We did that. Uh, we got to fulfill a promise to Kofi Kingston, give him a solo match. We did that. And we got to give Braid in the Dark, aka the Joker, a uh, tag match with Gunther, so we did that as well. Uh, as you can see, we signed Rob Van Dam out of free agency because, or out of the Legends pool, I should say, because, uh, you know, I had that idea in my head for a Bobby Lashley RVD feud. The classes line up, and since, you know, we haven't been able to get a hold of Beth Phoenix yet, um, in the meantime, why we've got the money to spare, so why not just keep signing people? Uh, so that's something I hope to build towards in the future. Um, so our match card for this week, we've got, well, first of all, Sami Zayn gonna call out Gunther because we gotta have Gunther in that tag match, so we'll try to advance the singles feud here. Kevin Owens gonna do advertising because, yeah, he's got five promo skill, and we're trying to get that that money goal, so we'll, we'll go for it. Uh, Asuka gonna do charity because she has less of a promo skill and, you know, she has, of the people who were left over, she had the highest stamina, so it just made sense to go with her. Uh, we're gonna give John Cena and Akira Tozawa the week off because, you know, uh, they, they, they've put in enough work in the last couple weeks, so they deserve it. Uh, I think Shelton and Bobby were, it, it just kind of worked out that way. Um, so for the opening match, Tamina, gonna take on Roxanne Perez in a steel cage match. The aforementioned tag team match with Gunther and Brayden. They're gonna be taking on Randy Orton and Rob Van Dam. What a team, I know. But uh, it's, it's who is available? Because like of the other people, the only face, the only other face was John Cena and um, he needs to rest. So RVD it is. Uh, Kofi Kingston getting that singles match, last man standing against Tommaso Ciampa. And then the main event is a triple threat match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Cora Jade, Raquel Rodriguez continue their rivalry. And Bianca Belair coming off of her title defense against Asuka. Gonna put the gold on the line as well. Um, I did want to pick up this Health Spa 3 card. Beginner's luck. I, I'm not sure if I really need that kind of card at this point. Uh, I'm mainly just concerned about keeping the people healthy and that's really all we need. Uh, and yeah, I don't, you know, if, if, if there was something else I wanted to do between recordings, I don't remember what it was. Uh, like, I don't think there's any of the power cards I wanted to do. We're fine, it'll be fine. So let's go ahead and confirm the book for week seven. And let's get into it. Steel cage match between Tamina and Roxanne. The win's gonna go to Roxanne Perez in a four-star opener. Sami Zayn advances the feud to level three. Tag team match. Oh, it starts a rivalry. I don't know if I'll be continuing that one, but Randy Orton and Rob Van Dam pick up the win. It got three stars, which honestly, more than I could have asked for. Yo, Kevin Owens, excellent advertising promo, got us $20,000 and only dropped one popularity. Love to see it. And I think I'm going to go ahead, you know, Kofi Kingston, he, we have this promise to fulfill to him, and I'm kind of curious to see it through, so we're going to go ahead and spectate this one. So Kofi Kingston trying to prove a point to his tag team partner, John Cena, and he's going to try to prove that point against the hard-hitting Tommaso Ciampa. So uh, we're gonna see how that works out for him. As, ooh, a clothesline by Kofi there, the nice counter. And yeah, this one's last man standing, so the winner is gonna get a morale boost, but the loser will drop some morale. So, uh, you know, I guess we'll see how that plays out. You know, this could be a really good, really good moment for Kofi Kingston, or, you know, if we fulfill the promise, but he ends up losing, then maybe it'll kind of like even itself out. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa climbing his way Back inside the ring, Kofi Kingston gonna send him into the corner. Kofi Kingston now hits him with the kick. Tommaso Ciampa tried to get out of the way, but Kofi drops him with a neck breaker and now going to the outside. I think he's looking for some kind of weapon and it's a kendo stick. Oh, we get a bit of a bit of an exchange there. Oh, 
They can't seem to decide where they're going to meet. And it continues. There we go. Ciampa gets into the ring. But Kofi Kingston, no. He went for the kendo stick shot. But Tommaso Ciampa took it away from him. But you got to watch out for the speed, the athleticism of Kofi Kingston. As I don't know where the kendo stick went. Um, it seems it got kicked out of the ring, I guess. So, uh, so much for the hardcore, uh, hardcore match, uh, the, the weaponry in this one. So Kofi Kingston now has Tommaso Ciampa up on his shoulders and drops him across the top rope with a stun gun. Sort of. It's not the traditional stun gun, but we'll take it. Kofi Kingston forearm shot. Tom he's now got the leg, driving it into the, driving the knee into the canvas. Wasn't sure if, if there was going to be some sort of counter there. But uh, it's a bit back and forth in this one so far. Neither man really gaining a distinct upper hand here, but Kofi Kingston with a European uppercut looking to change that. As the referee begins the count, I'm not quite sure why Kofi's letting this one go because it's still pretty early in the matchup, but, you know, got to ring out the drama. As the forearm shot once again delivered to Tommaso Ciampa. And again, the referee's going to begin the count. Perhaps Kofi just trying to, to plot out his game plan, try to figure out what his next move's going to be and recover recover his breath while he's at it. DDT delivered. Ciampa just can't seem to get back up to his feet here. And again, the count is going to begin. Kofi Kingston, maybe he's just maybe he's just mocking Tommaso right now. Maybe he's just... Like, you know, like I said, this match is to prove a point to John Cena. And so Kofi, you know, he's in the lead right now. He's in control and just really wants to, you know, let the moment soak in. If John Cena's watching this, well, Kofi Kingston trying to prove that if anyone's the weak link in that tag team, it's Super Cena, which is certainly a statement to make. As again, the count begins here. Um... You know, I'm hoping that this match can get a little more exciting. As the referee is now up to a count of six. I don't know how Ciampa hasn't moved yet. Maybe he's just, just playing possum, just waiting for Kofi to try to get a strike in, and then he's going to catch him. Oh, it was a springboard drop kick. So much for that. And the count begins again. Um, maybe spectating this match wasn't the call. I have already forgotten. I remember, like, the last time we did a last man standing match it wasn't particularly great but uh i feel like it was better than this one um it's really just like punch count him punch count him um i was hoping for a little more of like a string of offense here but somehow tomaso champa just cannot get out of the get, cannot get out of the starting blocks here he's got kofi by the back of the head now so has not lost control just yet as he picks up the kendo stick and he takes a whack at him and another one. But Kofi's still on his feet. Somehow Kofi Kingston just eating these kendo stick shots for breakfast. And now regains control, but not for long because Tommaso Ciampa now backs him into the corner. Oh, but the back elbow delivered by Kofi. And now Kofi with a running clothesline drops Ciampa. And now slamming the arm against the canvas. This could be the opportunity for Kofi Kingston to hit something big. But I guess he's not going to take it. Instead, he's just going to... Nope, nope, he is going to take it. Kofi Kingston off the ropes. And no, he missed with the boom drop. Kofi Kingston looking to put him away with his signature maneuver there. But it did not happen. Ciampa tried to go for one as well. But it didn't happen. And the trouble in paradise out of nowhere. That could spell the end for Tommaso Ciampa in this match. As the referee... Up to a count of three. Kofi Kingston, he thinks he's done it, and maybe he has. Count of five now. Tommaso Ciampa, he's down, he's out. The referee, a count of seven now. Count of eight. Count of nine. And I think that is going to be the deciding factor in this one. Kofi Kingston surprisingly a dominant performance over Tommaso Ciampa who usually you know one of the toughest competitors in the business I didn't think he would have gone down that easily but a statement victory tonight from Kofi Kingston he wanted to prove a point to John Cena and I think he's done just that not just to John Cena but to the WWE universe and to the Smackdown audience in attendance tonight
big victory for Kofi Kingston. And then you have to wonder what's going to be next on the horizon. The singles title, tag team titles. I guess we're going to find out. The matchup only got two stars, however, and like, I can't blame that. I know that the performance of the match has nothing to do with the star rating, but uh, yeah, that was kind of a mediocre match, uh, both in terms of, I guess, the, the in-game mechanics and also just the gameplay itself. Um, Asuka got us 4,000 fans on the charity promo, and now women's title on the line, the win is gonna go to Bianca Belair. She will take on all challengers and still she is the SmackDown Women's Champion. So we've truly got two superstars in that women's division. Of course, the Women's Champion, Bianca Belair, and the workhorse, the SmackDown mainstay, Asuka. But looking over at Monday Night Raw, it is Madcap Moss who picks up the win over Finn Balor in an Iron Man match, Commander Aziz. Gonna get the red brand 4,000 fans on the charity promo. Our truth picks up a win in a three-star match against Braun Breaker. Alexa Bliss begins a feud with Zoe Stark on that call-out promo. Eric picks up the win over Cameron Grimes. It got four stars, and that rivalry is gonna continue. And then last woman standing in the main event, Danielle Wallace and Piper Niven. The win is gonna go to Danielle, and that got four stars as well. Moving on over to NXT, Cedric Alexander and Ivar, also in an Iron Man match. Uh, clearly, I didn't get the memo that uh, Iron Man matches were, um, you know, the trend for this week. Nikita Lyons up two in the self promo. Oh boy, the big red machine Kane taking on JD McDonough, and uh, wow, the legend Kane takes the L here in his uh, first matchup on NXT. So again, you know, more legends popping up. Dakota Kai advancing that feud to level two. No, what? No, that's garbage. That's garbage. They took Beth Phoenix. Uh, where was she? Why didn't I see her? That's upsetting. That's, that's frustrating. I don't, I don't know what my next program for Asuka is going to be now because uh, the one I wanted to sign is on NXT. Uh, and I have no way to, I have no way to poach her. So, um, that sucks. Um, Damien Priest picked up the win over Johnny Gargano, I guess. And then Hell in a Cell NXT tag team titles were on the line. Uh, Shanky is injured again. Um, he was teaming up with Goldberg, but it's still Dolph Ziggler and Chad Gable who hang on to those NXT tag team titles and just... Uh, I, I... I feel like that, that, that is so unfortunate. They, they, just, they just stole Beth Phoenix right out from under me. And my whole plan to give Asuka a feud with her old tag team partner just goes up in smoke. Uh, maybe we can get it later on in the, in the, in the season, but, uh, ha, ah, that's frustrating. Um, we had a 118 for plus 31,000 fans. Roxanne Perez has a great feel for steel cage matches. Uh, we're all got a 113 for plus 32,000 fans. And NXT 117 for plus 31,000 fans. So I guess, um... Some sort of power cards are in effect there that the, the the ratings numbers didn't necessarily equate to who won the week. Um, but yeah, NXT in second place. Things continue as normal. Thanks for letting me prove who the problem was. He's got to get his act together. Better get ready for the new top team of the tag division. All right, so it increased Kofi Kingston's morale. Uh, Gunther and I really hit it off as a team last week. Crowd still loved us even though we didn't get the win. All right, sure. Sure. Um, maybe that's a future tag team. I, I won't count on it. <laughs> um, yep, so that took care of all of our promises. Have at least one Hell in a Cell match this week. So, uh, yeah, I'll take a Health Spa card. Um, who's got the stamina for it, though? So we could do... Well, I mean, Bobby Lashley's got 63, and RVD's got 60. We could start off the feud in Hell in a Cell. That might be a bit extreme, but we could do it. Um... Braid in the Dark, John Cena. We got options. We got options. 
All right, well, since I, I can't look out in the Legends pool for Beth Phoenix, that whole idea that I had is just, it, it's shot, it's gone. Um, ah, yeah, you know, hopefully they just have her on like a five week contract and I can I can get her back. Otherwise, like uh, the, the class matchup isn't gonna be there, but like there's Lita, there's, there's Trish maybe. Uh, I, I don't know, or maybe we just scrap the whole. See, but like, I, I don't, I don't know. I need to get some sort of bruiser for Asuka to face off with that isn't just Bianca. Um, yeah, because I have plenty of fighters. Ah, uh, that just, that's that's so frustrating. Ugh, Eric Bischoff, you know what? I I should play a I should play a power card against Bischoff, just just for that. I am going to pick up limited stock because I'm feeling toxic. I won't do it this week, but heading into the PLE, I'll be sure to I'll be sure to get back at Eric Bischoff. Um really I could go for all these power cards, um but I don't I don't, you know, I think we're far enough ahead. If it, if it starts to get close, I'll look into it, but right now not not really a concern for me. Um yeah, you know, I think I think we're gonna be pretty good as far as all this stuff looks. Um, the match card is gonna be a fatal four-way for the Intercontinental Championship. It's gonna be Sami Zayn, Gunther, Randy Orton, and Shelton Benjamin. Um, we're gonna hold off on the Universal title because that I feel like should just be Gunther, Sami one-on-one. But since Sami's a dual champion, you know, might as well see if someone else can win it here. Uh, mid-card triple threat, it is Tamina, Roxanne, and Asuka. You know what? I'm gonna make this a tables match, just because just I can. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa gonna do a self-promo, Kobe Kingston gonna do a charity promo, and Raquel is gonna call out Cora Jade, see if we can get that feud to level four. Although we do have two weeks away uh, until Survivor Series, so we'd have one more week to be able to uh, deal with that. Bobby Lashley, Rob Van Dam, going to go one-on-one. -on -one. No stipulation because, you know, don't want it to outshine the main event. And the main event, yeah, that's right. The Joker, he's in the main event as he's going to be taking on John Cena, level three rivalry, and it's inside hell in a cell. So we'll see what that does. Uh, yeah, I feel like level three rivalry, hell in a cell should draw a decent rating on its own. So... Uh, without any further delay, let's go ahead and confirm the book for week eight in Chicago, Illinois. Opening match, title fatal four-way, the win is gonna go to Randy Orton. So we have got a new intercontinental champion and his name is Randy Orton, the Viper. Kofi Kingston gets a 7,000 fans on the charity promo. Love to see it. Uh, triple Threat, Tamina, Roxanne, and Asuka. The win once again is going to go to Roxanne Perez. So that is a force, really. Uh, okay, so the opener was four and a half. The mid-card tables triple threats, or mid-card tables triple threat was four stars. And it advanced the rivalry as well. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa goes up for popularity on the self-promo. Bobby Lashley, RVD, one-on-one. -on -one. And the win is going to go to the almighty Bobby Lashley, but it ah, didn't start a feud. Unfortunate. Raquel does advance the feud with Cora Jade to level four at the very least. And then main event, Hell in a Cell, one-on-one. -on -one. John Cena, no. See, we're, pr oh no, only three and a half. Ah, that was an underwhelming main event, which I guess I could have seen coming. But I, I wasn't expecting the opener to do four and a half stars, so... Uh, that is what it is. Uh, but yeah, you know, it just proves Kofi Kingston's point that, you know, maybe John Cena is the weak link in the tag team because Kofi was able to win his singles match. John Cena, not so much. Madcap Moss picks up yet another win over Finn Balor in a four-star encounter. Uh, Alexa Bliss plus 8,000 fans on the charity promo. Uh, tag team matchup here. It's uh, interesting tag teams. Uh, MVP's out for five weeks, and it got two and a half stars. Uh, I hope it was worth it, Raw. Oh my god, another 8,000 fans on the charity promo? Raw, Raw is, they're, they're not playing around anymore. They're coming. Uh, Mid-card, Zoe Stark and Piper Niven taking on Danielle Wallace and Charlotte Flair. 
The win is going to go to Piper and Zoe. R-Truth call-out promo that didn't really seem to do anything. Oh my god. So, the main event is Eric versus Cameron Grimes, but we're getting a run-in from Bruno Sammartino, of all people. Uh, season 3, it really just is... Uh, anything can happen. Anything can happen in the WWE. Uh, four and a half star classic match, but their WWE champion is out for five weeks. Uh, opener, Hell in a Cell, or not Hell in a Cell. Um, it's just one on one. Ivar and Cedric Alexander, and now Cedric is out for three weeks, and it got three and a half. Johnny Gargano calling out Dolph Ziggler, and that advances the feud. Natalia, Nikki Bella, and Gigi Dolan. And the win is going to go to Gigi Dolan for two and a half stars. Vader goes up to popularity on the self promo. Why did they even sign Beth? She's not on the show. They just did that to spite me. Uh, JD McDonough and Kane Iron Man match. The win goes to Kane. And that got three and a half. Uh, self promo for Dakota Kai does nothing. And the main event, NXT Women's title back on the line. I thought this feud was over, but I guess not. Um, Alba Fire retains and Shayna, ba they're both injured. Injuries everywhere in this episode of my GM. Crazy. Uh, so we got good booking, which, you know, all we can really ask. Yeah, it's like if the main event wasn't a little underwhelming, that definitely would have been amazing booking. So just a little bit of a miscalculation on my part. What is this? So many injuries. I guess it's is this is just this is just really setting the pace for uh, season three. Um, one twenty three for plus forty thousand fans. One sixteen for plus forty six thousand fans. And NXT 112 for plus 26. So I feel like Raw probably passed NXT this week. Health Spa 3 card. And free crew booking as well for one of our season challenges. Yeah, so Raw has yet to get that third trophy, but they do have more fans than NXT. Although I guess if fans don't matter and it's all about trophies, then like I guess w I, we're probably not going to lose number one realistically, but. Uh, it is what it is, I guess. One week out from the Survivor Series. Hey, I feel like I'm the fall guy every week at the moment. Uh, Shelton wants a win. Good thing we have the, uh, fixed match card. Hey boss, I have a proposition for you. How about you and I have ourselves a little partnership in the next few weeks? Uh, sure? Uh, I guess. You know, have to have to have to fulfill everyone's promises. We've got three weeks to do it. Uh, have at least one steel cage match this week, and we get superstar training. Um, yeah, but that's gonna do it for uh, today's episode. I keep wanting to say this week's. Uh, thank you for watching me, and I will see you next time.